Well, hey guys, thanks for coming back. Now, I know you're surprised to see me again so soon, but I actually took some time off from work. No, I did not get laid off, but I had some time, so I decided to take some time. That has turned out to be one of the saving graces for me at Amazon. Because when I owned my own business, whenever I wanted to take time off, I could. I just rearranged my schedule. Amazon is a lot more structured, but there is a level, a level of freedom there that you can utilize. So uh, to me, those days when I just, I'm just not in the mood, okay? <laughs> If I have some time, I use it or I go, and then when they offer me VTO, I'm like, okay, I'll take it. You know, I know at what level I need to keep my income at so that my bills get paid. And you know, I can take care of things that I need to take care of for me personally and for the house. So um, that has been the saving grace for me at Amazon. Being able to use my time as much as I can afford to any way I want to without having to give any reason for it. Now, today's video is, now you all know when I started camping, oh my God, 10 years ago, it just wasn't something black women did, you know, but for what? The first year I camped, the first time I went camping, I had a four person tent, an air mattress with a great bedding set, cooler, a chair, and my emergency uh, steno stove to cook with because I hadn't really been camping since I was a Girl Scout, but it was just something I wanted to try. And I remember that first night and, and I camped riverfront and once it got so dark, I couldn't see the water anymore. I was absolutely surprised at all the stars in the sky. And I remember sitting out there all night long. And see, back then I didn't know about dew, okay? So yeah, I got wet. But by the time I went on my next trip, I knew I needed to have some type of shelter to protect me from the dew. And that's basically the personality I have. Once I decide to do something, I'll do as much research as I can, but I'm not gonna spend a bunch of money until I find out whether or not I really like it. And as the time went on, I ended up spending tons of money for camping, but that's because I loved it. And so my setups were about as close that you could get to being at home as humanly possible, because what I found out was I loved the comforts of home, but I also loved being outside. And then I got into bushcraft, you know, because it's like the next step. That's how the bushcrafter's wife came into being because that was my take on being able to do a little bushcraft. And of course, it was only inevitable that at some point I would look at van life. And so I even decided to do some truck camping to kind of quasi see what it would be like to actually have to, you know, sleep in the van. Now, of course, I still had my outdoor stuff, you know, my kitchen set up and my bathroom set up because I'm still at a campground. But I wondered what it would be like to actually live in your van, a.k.a. van life. And I came to some realizations that while I could live the life, it wouldn't be the life for me. And I thought we would talk about what things I could do and what things I couldn't do. Because we see all the van life videos. Some of them make it look fabulous. And well, I already know it's not fabulous, but they're good actors. And that's why they have successful YouTube programs because the bad actors tell you the truth and then by the time you watch the video you feel all icky and you know what you don't go back so let's talk about if I could do van life where would I be successful but where would I fail <laughs> things are, there are probably a lot more people getting ready to get into van life, even though 
it's not as easy as it was maybe 10 years ago. But now it's even more of a necessity. Okay? Now, if it was, if I didn't, if there weren't for the cons that I know I couldn't deal with, I am 62. I would have been working up to going ahead and retire at 62 and planning on living the van life. But the way things are now, it is so much harder to do. Places are now so fed up with van life, RV life, and just straight up homelessness that even places that welcomed you to stay a safe place at night are taking those offers back. I mean, so at this point, and that's the number one, well, that's the number two thing for me. I'll tell you what the number one thing is later. The number two thing for me is where the hell would I sleep? Okay, because even at my ex-husband's, their town has an ordinance that you can't even have an RV in your driveway, much less a little chocolate girl living in her Jeep in his backyard. And a lot of towns are making those rules because people have been utilizing that life so much, especially during the pandemic, that people are just starting to get fed up. So it's a lot harder to find a safe place to sleep. Now, I think I showed you the setup I had created for truck camping, and it looked great. The problem is, I'm 5'7". The mattress that fit perfectly into the back of the Jeep on the back seat is only like 5'4", and believe, or probably 5 feet. Believe it or not, while you can sleep crumpled up occasionally, that is not something you can do every day. Day. And I look at some of the van life videos, and unless they specifically tell me they're 5'4 or 5'5, five five, I know damn well they don't fit in their bed. And it has got to be uncomfortable. I mean, extremely uncomfortable. Now, the more successful they get, they can always, you know, sleep in a hotel. Hell, most of them probably got apartments they haven't told us about. But they don't have to live like that the more successful they get. But remember, their van life videos are their paycheck. So unless they continue to make videos, then they don't have a paycheck. But I am pretty sure more than half of the van life videos do not live in their vans full time any longer. Because for most of them, it was all about not having to pay rent because something happened and they couldn't afford the rent anymore. It was all about necessity when it first happened. And I actually looked at some of these people's apartments because they, they always show us what their houses look like before they got into van life. And you know damn well, there is no way in hell they would give all that up to live in a van this big. So yeah, maybe they did the best they could with what they had, but their ultimate goal was always to get back to the lap of luxury. And I'm sure that's what most of them do when they're not filming. So no, my bed would not be comfortable, you know, full time. Um, and since I don't have the kind of personality um, that would tell you everything was great, I probably wouldn't get enough views to ever get out that damn thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that. So um, that was my number three thing. Um, sleeping in a bed that's not long enough for you is not comfortable at all. Number four, I can't stand clutter. I mean, you all have seen, when you all first met me, um, when I first started camping, I lived in a two-bedroom townhouse. It got to the point where I had to do most of the work myself because it was so hard to find employees. And I just decided I didn't want to renew the contract. So once I did that, I was going to have to downsize. And that's when I moved to my studio. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I completely remodeled that studio myself at my own expense because I thought that was where I was going to retire. And even though it was only 400 square feet, I did a fabulous job of making it comfortable. And the only reason why I stayed there so long 
even after the Slumlords bought it, was because I really didn't want to leave that studio. But eventually, I had to. Now, though we also know that when I took the job at Amazon for Christmas, I knew it was time to move out of that studio because the rents and the, and the fees were ridiculous. And I moved into a transitional place until after peak when I could go find another apartment. Well, then the pandemic hit and I'm stuck at that little place for six months. Now, I did a great job of making it livable. But holy cow, as we got to month four and five, it just started to close in on me. It just started to close in on me. So I, even though the apartment I live in now, I had to move out of state to find it, it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. And what I have now is a thousand square feet for basically $50 more. Then I paid for that teeny weeny transitional space. So I know I can do small spaces, but I also know I can't have every comfort in life or it's going to become overrun. So I would basically have to accept the fact that I wouldn't have an indoor shower. I wouldn't have an indoor bathroom. I would have to go to public places for that. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. I hate going to public bathrooms. I absolutely hate public bathrooms. And so that's not something I would want to have to do every day, a couple of times a day. That was you the know, thing about Amazon. When I went to Amazon, I'd only worked in a factory once in my life. And the bathrooms were so disgusting, I did my best not to ever have to use them. And then I get to Amazon, and the bathrooms are like five star. Holy crap, they were clean, they were fresh. The lady who did the bathrooms, whenever I ran into her, I felt like I should give her a dollar. Because that's how great the bathrooms were. Unfortunately... When you go to bathrooms in random places on the road, that's not the experience you have. You know, just like, I could I do without having an oven? Yeah, I think I could. Um, I probably would still want to have a fridge. I would want to have a way to stay warm. I would want to have a microwave or something. Well, now you're talking a whole lot of solar, in which case now everybody knows you're living in your vehicle, or I would have to wire everything up and have multiple marine batteries in a closet somewhere. Jeep's just not big enough for that. In all honesty, I could not live in that Jeep in those close quarters with all that stuff and still have to give up the main stuff unless the van only got me to a destination. And once I got there, I was staying in a, a, a quasi-luxury, you know, hotel. But to live in that environment permanently with no way out, I wouldn't even have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Number five, <clears throat> being in that depressingly small space, having to use public facilities no real money doesn't sound like a good time to me. Not even if I could bamboozle you all into thinking that I was having a great time and you supported the channel. It just, it just wouldn't work. It absolutely just wouldn't work because I'm too much of an open book. I, I couldn't even... I couldn't even pretend everything was great. I just, I couldn't even pretend. So basically, if my life deteriorated to that, and I'm not going to lie, everybody has their idea of what a high in their life is. For me, the high, I've had highs in my life. When I had gave birth to my daughter, it hurt. But man, that was an amazing experience. When I started my business, man, I did all the work myself the first year or so. 
But once I was able to hire employees and, and open an office and, and, and have reviews on Yahoo reviews, man, another amazing experience. The day I moved into the house of my dreams, didn't own it, but I rented it, was an amazing experience. But living in a space this big and not having the creature comforts of life, that is not something I could ever fake. I just, I, I would, couldn't fake it. I wouldn't want to share it with anybody. And I would hope that it never happens. But if it does, I would deal with it. But I would not deal with it publicly. Because I would just barely be surviving. And there's there's no amount of fake, oh, this is great. I'm having a wonderful time. I couldn't even pull that off. I would not even be able to pull that off. Not even long enough to get viewers to like me enough to tune in so they could give me a bunch of money from my YouTube ads so I could either get a bigger vehicle or, or be able to stay in a hotel whenever I felt like it. I just don't have that personality. I'm a little bit too, I'm a little bit too real for that. I'm just not that good of an actress, you know? So that would be the other thing. It's the, the quarters are too tight. I would have to give up too much. And in all honesty, I wouldn't feel human. And if I had to do it because I had no other choice, I would not have a YouTube channel. <clears throat> I just wouldn't have one. So, but the number one reason is I really hate to drive. You know, I got a fear of heights. I got a fear of bridges. I got a fear of um, concrete barriers that, you know, squeeze you into a lane. How you can be a YouTuber if you're afraid to drive? I mean, <laughs> what am I going to do? Just drive from my house to my exes all the time and tell you I'm really on the road when really I'm not. I'm just driving from my place to my exes because this place is about an hour and a half away. They have one bridge that I'm used to, so I'd be okay. But I would never show you anything because what am I going to show you? You understand what I'm saying? So, um... Those are the reasons why I couldn't be a van lifer. Now, but what would turn all of that around and make it another high point and fabulous experience would be if I had a small RV that had all the creature comforts of home, an onboard shower, an onboard potty, although I probably wouldn't use it. I would still use my... Um, my bucket and convalescent system because that's a lot easier to manage than having to um, dump stuff if you get my drift. It's so much easier to tie up a bag and toss it in any uh, nearby dumpster. If I had real money in the van or the RV or even the, the Jeep, I would do this in the Jeep. If it was only to get me from point A to point B, and at the end of point B, it's a fabulous hotel for three days. And then I would get back in the Jeep to get me back from point B to point C, because at the, <clears throat> at the end of point C, it's another fabulous hotel for three days. Because I'm sure some of you all remember Bubby. We did a trip to the beach in an old Volkswagen van. It was one of the best trips I've ever had in my life. And yes, we stayed in the Volkswagen van from the time we left the house until we got to the beach. We spent the night somewhere in the middle. You know, neither one of us took a shower, but the next day we got to our destination and we stayed at a fabulous hotel. That is the only way I could see myself doing van life. As a, as a means to get from one place to another without having to spend money for hotels until I got to my destination. Living in a van just permanently every day with no highs in place, that is not something I would publicize. 
I would just drop off the face of YouTube. But I still have hope that I will meet a partner who does like to drive. And between the two of us, we can come up with the money we need to be able to do that. But unless that happens, I will stay at Amazon until my knees fall off. And because I cannot afford to retire at 62, I really have to wait until 65 or 67 to get the maximum amount. And that's real life. So I hope I haven't itched you out too much. But I think that this was, I think this was helpful to some people. Take care, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.